Hello everyone, this is lesson number 9 of GitLab CI CD tutorial and in this lesson I'm going to talk about Runner Docker Executor. This is the last lesson and I will do a kind of mix between this one and an hybrid execution I will, I will be doing. But let's start. Okay, let's go back because I want to show you something. Just over here. Okay, first of all, where we are. Uh, we have covered many many topics: shell executor, Docker, GitLab CI CD, .yaml, Dockerify, GitLab, the communication between all of them. But in this case, we are using Docker Executor. What does it mean? Okay, as you can see, let me explain with this one, with this square, with this container, the one, the personal one. Uh, we have a runner, the registry, GitLab, and we have a. a already installed docker in the instance in in any instance we want but in this case we have just one docker um, process running in our computer with with what's with just one docker uh, process i mean we just install one docker uh, we download docker and we install this in the machine that's all and we use that one with different runners in order to execute any any code we want or any image we want to build. Okay, there we are. Then we are okay. But what happened with Docker Executor? It is it is also known as Docker in Docker Execution. Why? Because when we create a GitLab a GitLab and a GitLab CI .yaml file, what we are doing is as you already know, we can use image into our GitLab CI.yaml file. Let's suppose we want to use Ubuntu image. Uh, we can use it. We can use Node image, uh, Apache, whatever we want. But what happens if we want to uh, build with we want to use a Docker image? Is that possible? Okay, that is possible, and it is what we are. It is what we are going to do. Um, what it really means is that we are built virtualizing Docker into an already uh, Docker and already executed Docker because we have this Docker running here in our machine, this one, and we are pulling maybe from Docker Hub or forever from whatever, whatever you want. We are pulling an image. And when we pull that image, we virtualize the Docker, as I already said. And for that reason, the main idea of this executor is that its execution is completely isolated from the other executions. Why? Because it is just a process running into a process. It is just a Docker running into a Docker. When the process finish, all things finish. But it is the way that it works, and it is the cleanest way that we can use. But there is a problem. At least um, a problem I found. I didn't find any solution for that. It is that when we use Docker in Docker, it is most of the time useful, for example, for running test cases, for building, for pulling. But it is, it is not that useful for running. Why? Because it is just a process running into Docker. And what happens if we have another another container running in another completely isolated Docker? How can we know that it is running? And it will also lock the, ex the completely execution. But uh, let's recreate this with an example. Let me finish this. I create two branches. Why? Because I'm going to deploy in two different ways. One, let me see. I already have the code. As you can see, I have these two branches. The code is there, is there for you if you want to use it. Let me know if you want to improve something from there or you have any comment regarding this, the way I'm doing this. And also this one. Let me explain first this one. But 
from the terminal is not that beautiful. Let me explain you this from GitLab because I already pushed this code. And the changes I did uh, in different in a different in the different way that I did it because as you can see, as you are going to see, it is different uh, with the previous lesson that we use the shell executor. Let's start with uh, Docker executor just over here. As you can see, I just have two stages. I don't have any deploy stages in this in this example. Why? Because I already told you it is because the reason I told you uh, it is completely isolated and for that reason when it finish all things finish and it is not that in the other way that we did in the previous video that we start a process and we keep it running because it is in our machine and then we just uh, kill any process that is currently running the, the good part of this uh, approach is that we don't need to stop any process we did we don't need to kill anything when we run because it is completely isolated as I already told you let me compare this with the shell executor as you can see here we are stopping then we are removing the image with docker in docker it is not required also uh, and take a look in here that I'm not using any image it was not required for this execution but for docker in docker for the docker executor I'm using image docker latest and this service docker dint service this is the way that I'm using docker in docker this is the way the most of the time you do this and also I have the same variables just over here uh, then I have the two stages the build the project and you can see I don't have any stop any restart any remove anything I just execute the steps I want because it is completely isolated just remember that and then uh, the same I'm logging and then I pull the registry the, the registry I already pushed in this stage then I run but in this case I'm running the test cases as you remember okay also let me see from this file if I want I can't remove for example this line also this line it is not required at all this line at least for this this implementation because it is uh, independent from all the other executions and okay let's do a simple test I will just edit this file for it to start uh, as if I commit let's commit this and it will start pipeline let me see just over here also let me see where is the file I'm looking for this one um, as you can see I'm not using uh, my personal docker my I'm sorry my personal runner just for you to know in this site it is running as you remember I have two runners this one and this one this is the one I am using for shell executors and the docker in docker I can use this one I'm not using my my own because my internet is really slow and it will take a lot of time for the reason I'm using a char a char a chart runner as you can see I didn't use any tag in that case it it it, it is start it starts with with a chart runner with a chart runner now it is running it is building the project as you remember it is running npm npm already run yeah good
now it is done it pushed the changes to the registry as you remember from the previous lesson and job succeed and let's take a look into the test stage it is also running now oh it is running the test cases now and let me see it looks good it start the server temporarily remember because in this case um, because of the library I'm using it it just started the server temporarily and temporarily and then it it run test cases using that server then it finish job succeed perfect okay it is for docker in docker as you can see I didn't remove any image any container anything because it is isolated and it works perfect for that situations it is just to to register and docker runner and then you can use it or if you want you can use a chart runner but let's take a look because I create another one it is almost the same it is just a mix between shell executor and docker shell uh, the docker executor sorry this one and let me see as you can see what I'm doing here I'm using the same uh, just for you to know as you can see we can use different image for each for each stage here I'm using the docker docker latest image for with the service docker dean it is for stage build and I build in the project with um, a char runner also for the test stage I'm doing the same from this from here and for the deploy project for deploying the project I'm not using any image any image it is not required because as you remember when we use the shell executor it is almost the same than running the commands directly from the command line for the reason almost from uh, also at least sorry from from this stage it is not required first I log in my password the one I register um in the variables in the GitLab variables then I pull the registry I stop any process as you can see because as you can see here I'm using my personal runner and I'm using the shell executor runner then I run the project and we have a project running in our server and this is the way I'm doing this right now let me know if there is any other approach you know I, I, I I'm already aware that there are many ways let me know which one you think is the best for GitLab CI CD or uh, also your experience and um, but let's start I will edit edit let's commit just for starting a new pipeline And it's running. Now we have three stages. It is running. It is currently it is really good to use Docker. It is the, the main purpose of our, all this because we can centralize all the knowledge. We can centralize all the, the dependencies because always there is a lot of problems with dependencies between developers, between projects, and using Docker we can centralize that and we can keep all uh, all together because we are using all the same also I'm, I'm creating a new video I will I will publish it in a few days it is related with uh, running direct directly to docker from IntelliJ and, but that will be for later 
now we are focusing this just um, take a look what will happen if we can deploy directly to docker if we are using any I mean, I'm, I said IntelliJ because it's the the ID I currently use. But if we can deploy directly for any ID, we don't need to install anything in our machine. We will just download a Docker image from our project, our company, wherever we are, and we can start coding. We don't need to install. We don't need to to pollute uh, our computer. We just installed. We just pull the image and we start coding. That's all, and we don't have. We will don't. We will don't have any issue, any problem with the dependencies. Let's take a look in this stage. As you can see. Uh, for each execution, it is installing all, all the all the package, re all the required package because it is independent from the other execution, completely independent. Let's run in the test cases and just one second. Job succeed, no issues, no problem. One test, one assertion, and we already created and deploy project. It will take some time because it is using my personal runner. Let's wait. Now the runner is running. You can see it is fetching the changes, checking out, escaping. Get some model set up. It is login uh, with my uh, GitLab registry. Uh, then it is pulling the image. Some of the layers are already there. It is really good with uh, with this kind of image because um, because of the layered way that it is. Uh, the Docker. And also, it depends where, when you are. It uh, recognizes if the layer layer is already there. For the reason, it's not like we are always pulling uh, duplicated layers, and we need a lot of internet, a lot of sorry, a lot of bandwidth for pulling that uh, layers. It's really good. Download complete. Let's wait some seconds. Now, as you can see, it, it is stopped. Um, as you remember, if there is any other image or if there is any other containers, it is currently related with the containers. It is removing the containers and it starts to stopping them. Then we run our project and job succeed. There is a background process running. Let's take a look second let's take a look if it is currently running or we are expecting and correct it is running perfect just clear this terminal and currently we have all the branches for you if you need it, let me know if there is anything you think that I can add to this, to this tutorial, to this code also. And if you think if you, if you think this tutorial is useful, this material was useful or is useful for you, please like and subscribe. I am preparing new material, but that's all from this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next videos.